You have entered the Aqua Brain. I'm your Virgil Drew. On today's show, we're going to talk mountains, music, and much more with my friend. We used to shovel ramps together back at Alpensaw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aqua Brain, Miles Nowlin. Miles, how in the hell are you? Hi, Andy. <laughs> Long Drew. time, man. Yeah. Like, whatever you go by these days, I'm I'm doing good today, you know. See, that's depends, awesome. So depends on the day. Yeah. So where are you? Uh, I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now in my casita. Oh, very cool. So what are you doing down there? Well, I just moved here six weeks ago to wow. um to to shake my life up. Nice. Yeah, to get out of the soggy rainforest and to get out of the workforce and to go and take a little little taste of academia. Excellent. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to grad school at University of New Mexico. Okay. Yeah. What are you uh, What are you pursuing? Well, I've decided to get a master's in Latin American studies, um, which is similar to what I studied in undergrad forever ago. Cool. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what that, what that means. You know, um, I have a lot of interest in, um, like U S Latin American relations. Um, I studied Cuba and in, in undergrad and, and was there last year meeting with some people about cooperative businesses. Oh. Um, and then I, and I'm really interested in land reform and, and making, mm. uh, making it possible for working people and poor people to, um to own the land you know under their workplaces under their homes nice. uh, and, to, and to kind of reclaim land for the for the people so that that's cool. something that i've been thinking a lot about in these past couple of years well hopefully that can translate uh not not just to the latin american world but also to uh i know a lot of people in the states would <laughs> would like to do that and like, i'll raise my hand yeah. i'd i'd love to like you know are you talking are you talking uh when you say cooperative are you talking like um, uh, food forest kind of permaculture kind of thing or? Uh, yeah, well, I, you know, um, well, you know, to first address the stuff, stuff in the US, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm looking to do is to figure out like ways that um, we can in the United States um, support people, working people to have land they need like to, to farm, subsistence farming, whatever business, but also housing security, mm. right? And also yeah. to preserve heritage and history and to um, kind of put a, a stop gap into the explosive gentrification, right? That, Excellent. that yeah. going on. Super but in the, in, the, in the co-op world, I've, the last three years I've been working as a co-op, a housing co-op developer. So helping people in mobile home parks um, become owners, co-owners of their mobile home park with their neighbors oh, and wow. run their and run their mobile home park democratically huh. without a landlord. So getting the, you know, getting the landlord out of the way, getting yeah. the profiteering out of the way and just having control of your own community through democratic process. That's well, I always, I always thought it would be cool. You know, if I, if I had a, let's just say I had enough money to buy a, a chunk of land, I always think it would be cool to to make uh, like a tiny home kind of thing where to open mm. up for that. Or if people wanted to build like other sorts of put a yurt or something on there and then have community gardens and kind of, I mean, obviously that would be the initial investment would be to get the land, to get it going um, without a profit incentive, but more just to be, to, to facilitate that. Yeah. And I think that is, possible and it fits really well into my under my interpretation of the american dream you know which is democracy and shared goods and um the land trust model is something that you might want to look into where a, a non-profit land trust would actually own and preserve the land huh. or or the home but in many cases would just own and preserve the land you would have like a hundred year lease on the land and then you and your your collective members could have um, mobile units like tiny homes. Those are really good, right? Yeah. For this kind of setup, because then you can um, you can own that asset, and it doesn't have to be linked into the land necessarily. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, I've also I've also thought uh, it'd be kind of cool 
to to start a buffalo herd <laughs> you know i had this okay. great i had this crazy idea right where you get but you need a, a certain amount of land right to do this mm -hmm. but but what a great way to feed a bunch of people right if you had yeah if you started a herd and then now not everybody eats meat right so you're gonna have that whole thing but but you know if you okay once the herd gets big enough you can take one or two out and you're like feeding a ton of people it's really good lean meat and it's better way better for the environment than cows right if I mean, cow was like a like a hummer em emitting you know greenhouse gases okay. into the atmosphere like buffalo would be like a geo metro i i think yeah and you're i mean somebody hopefully can write this in the comments or maybe you know, but I know that there's a uh, disease that buffalo don't get that cows are susceptible to. Um, oh, okay. And I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'm just not, I'm not finding it. But uh, yeah, if Doesn't anybody matter. knows, you that, live in Idaho, so you can just like ask your neighbor, right? And it's uh, it's a different no world way. here, that's for sure. But but like you were saying, gentrification is definitely moving here into my neighborhood, yeah. and I and I see it. I see it. Um, it's definitely got its pros and cons. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I didn't, didn't have you on the show to, to really talk politics and stuff. Um, next time, next time, next time. Yes, we should. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, this is the second new year's show that I've done today. And my other show was on politics and it, okay. was, it was leaning really hard one direction and okay. that was just based on the guest that I had. So yeah, so yeah. It's like because I I find myself, and I I find myself very much in the middle, and I like certain ideas, and then I find that um, things get taken to the extreme. And, yeah. And if you have political conversations uh, with people, you can always find something that will basically make you either a want to hit that person, or. <laughs> or never talk to him again, you know? So it's a very, um, <laughs> but yeah. Miles, you've just launched this Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so my band Rooster Crow, um, we're out of Olympia, Washington, and we've been playing um, original, like alternative country, folk rock kind of genre music. Um, probably for the last seven years or so as, as a band. Okay. Um, this is our second record, uh, cool. full length record that we're putting out and yeah, I'm really proud of it. I, I wrote seven songs on the record. Nice. Um, and then my boys, um, Mike Bitsis wrote a couple of fantastic tunes and then my boy Pete Fields, who's uh, one of my dearest, oldest friends, um, for actually we met at the Evergreen State College, um, probably back around when you and me met. Um, um, he plays in he plays in a couple of great bands out of the San Francisco area. Um, he oh, wrote cool. a song. He get he gifted me a song <laughs> during the process because because I because we were short like one tune. I had cut oh, one really? of the songs and I really wanted the ten songs and. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, Miles, I got this tune and I, I'm down to, I'm down to just, you know, wow. throw your way. That's awesome. And so, so we're like, all right. And we like wrote down the lyrics and we, and we rehearsed it in the studio and we just threw down. Right. And that, That's and that awesome. song that I'm speaking about is, is called ride the line, um, which is the feature song of the music video okay. um, that, that I made for um for the kickstarter campaign right which is basically a way to um pay for the production of the record through crowdsourcing very, very um cool. but you get something in return right so you get a cd at you know you know a digital downloads five bucks a cd is 12 bucks a record's 20 bucks and then it goes up from there doing the vinyl pressing that's awesome yeah 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 we're doing like the hipster thing you know sweet it's <laughs> it's cool these days yeah so i'm super psyched i ordered 200 records and they're just going to show up to my little casita Man, in the awesome. burke here and 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 then we're gonna i'm gonna send them out 
That's so people. Cool. So like, I really just hope people understand that, you know, we're not just asking people to give us their money. We're asking folks to support our artwork and to receive that artwork, you know, and, and to, to enjoy that, you know, with their, their friends and family. And it's, it's good. It's refreshing. Um, I was listening to a couple tracks last night and I was mm -hmm. just digging it. Uh, do you, do you have that video? Can we, can we watch that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, let me share my screen real quick. Steep and climb to the place you lay your head at night. Ride the line through that broken window where she'll be waiting to welcome you home. Don't let the stars wrap you up in their the dark anymore but you've been out in the wilderness so long when i've been right outside of your front door ride the line till your wheels fall off your counting time by the clouds in Ride the line till your knees turn numb and your face to face with the decisions you've made. Don't let the desert wrap you up in its loving arms. I'm not afraid of the dust anymore. But you've been out in the wilderness so long When I've been right outside of your front door Don't try, you can win Just do what you've done From the very beginning Don't lie, don't try to be forgiven Don't let the stars wrap you up in their loving arms I'm not afraid of the dark anymore But you've been out in the wilderness so long When I've been right outside front door miles that was awesome yeah. thanks buddy that was cool. i like the uh it's kind of got a somber kind of thing going but yet it's it's positive too it's the same can you can you tell me the uh the motivation for the song yeah well i didn't write the song but my one of my closest friends in the world did and and he actually um, wrote a description of the of the story um which is on the Bandcamp website and basically those guys he was traveling around the country a lot with his band Trainwreck riders um which you should all check out great country punk group out of the nice. bay area Love that. and they had car problems all the time <laughs> It seemed like some, yeah, some like she, some like really, really hard van problems um, over the years, and and I think what happened, and and you can't quote me on this, you're gonna have to go to the Rooster Crow Band Camp to read it. Um, Link in the description. There you go. <laughs> was that was that they just picked up like uh, like a a van like in like Oklahoma, I think, and it was a lemon. 
but they needed to like make it to the next gig. And they're actually between like driving between San, Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Um, and, and the motor was overheating. Right. And so yeah. the needle was like just right on the line. <laughs> oh, okay. You know? Oh, right. And so that's, line. and so that's right. The line, that's like where the, where it came from. But like, for me, the song doesn't have anything to do with the band in a car, like at all. No. Yeah, no, for me, it was more sentimental. And, and, and I think fitting for this show, because for me, it had a lot to do with, with mountain lifestyle and um, risk and um, stepping into the unknown and riding the line for me is like, um, you know, maybe, maybe ascending a ridge crest. And on one side, you know, you've got, you've got like a big exposed fall. And on the other side, you've got like a crevasse or something. I don't know, but, yeah. but, but that it, that it is, it does have a somber tone, but really it's uplifting and it's saying like, you know, hang in there and, and, and ride on and, and, and do it. Um, do whatever it takes right basically yeah. but like don't get lost right don't get lost in the desert don't get lost in the stars um and, and don't try to like cheat your way out you know i mean that's huge right now i mean i think i think in a lot of ways people are are mentally riding a line you know and big time and that answer might not be the easiest in the world right a lot of times the easy way out is sometimes the most dangerous um, yes, yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. So like, I've also been thinking a lot about shortcuts, right. And how much danger you can get yourself into mm -hmm. with that. And my dear friend has given me this advice for my grad school experience of, um, it's written on my wall that says, don't take any shortcuts. I dare you. Right. So that wow. I can fulfill this commitment that I have to um, my personal development. And it's the same thing with rock, with climbing, you know, or, or, or mountain, mountain riding, skiing, snowboarding, backcountry skiing, whatever, um, is that you, um, you're always kind of riding that line between uh, your risk assessment and your decision on whether or not to, um, you know, drop in or, you um, or or be cautious right or whether yeah. or not to ascend to the peak or to wait and see what the storm does you know and to right. balance the risk the risk analysis um as we love to you know as we love to discuss in in, in the outdoor adventure world right <laughs> right and i, I yeah. find that i so i've been snow skating for a number of years and uh you know i find that with the snow skate if you're timid or if you try to be cautious it mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wants you, it wants you on that line. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that, um, I think you can put it a lot of different ways or you can relate it to a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. but you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to relate it to another something I found just recently. Um, and that's the heartfulness meditation. I don't know if you've heard of that, it's a, mm -hmm. it's an, uh, an Indian thing. It's non-denominational and it's, mm -hmm. you know, I've always wanted to meditate. Um, I've always wanted to get into it, but you know, when I read about, you know, you're sitting and the posture and everything, shave your head. And, and it's like, it seems like so much to get into it. And when I, when I discovered this just, just recently, um, they're just like, Hey, meditate on your heart, find mm -hmm. that, Find that light of sort the the light of source is in your heart. Meditate on that. Let it mm -hmm. draw you in. And uh it's amazing, right? Because it's like I don't, there's no dogma attached to it. And actually, mm -hmm. this morning, I this is this is where the, the correlation between the ride of the line. Um, they're doing this three-day meditation. Uh mm -hmm. it's about an hour uh and because it's in India and the, the way the time is mountain time is five 30 AM is when it starts. And right. so I've made the decision to get up for that. And that's mm -hmm. like really early. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Big time. And, big and, time. But it's commitment. 
but this Just morning was amazing, right? Mm. This, this morning I had such a great experience. Right. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes when you, when you ride the line, mm -hmm. you, you experience something that had you not taken that step, mm -hmm. that, that would, that uncomfortable step, you wouldn't have experienced mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's, <laughs> there's nothing easy about the, the things that we enjoy, like the things that you and I enjoy when it comes to, whether it's meditation or mountain, mountain sports, mountain adventure, you're always putting yourself in uncomfortable in some situations, dangerous situations where you have to analyze pro or con and you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically so that when you enter into those sometimes precarious situations, you can be ideally in that optimal like flow state, right? Which is yeah. kind of what came to mind when you were describing the meditation. Yeah. It's like a good day of climbing for me is of rock climbing for me is, is, is where I can block out the distracting fears of climbing above the protection and trust in my physical and mental abilities, um, to, to, to get past that protection and clip the next piece or, or whatever. And, and an almost like meditative euphoric state, like that's yeah. the jam, right? Yeah. Like that's what we want. That natural high. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, for so, sure. So what was the, what was the, uh, what was the coolest place that you climbed? Like, what was your most memorable climb? Oh, I'm you sure know, you've been to a lot of cool places, but what, what, what's, yeah. The up there? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, I've, I've, I've climbed some really cool routes, you know, I, 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 I gotta say, like, I've been very inspired in Idaho. Like we, we were really? talking yeah. Earlier before the show, I feel like maybe five or six years ago, I went out to to City of, of Rocks, which is a terrible place to climb. Never go there. It's awful. You, you don't want to go to Almo. <laughs> really? um, no, it's my, I mean, it's a gem. It's an absolute yeah. gem. Um, and that's kind of where I learned how to trad climb traditional you know climb okay. where where you place your own protection you're not relying on pre-drilled bolts wow um and then there's just something about the the magic of that place too um so yeah there's a few a few routes out there that just really stand out um to me um one of them's called broken is it broken arrow or lost arrow can never remember. It's one of the two. Um, it's a two pitch five climb. seven climb. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 not a particularly hard technical climb, but there's something about this climb that makes you feel like you're just like on the edge of El Cap or something. Oh, Maybe wow. it's the wind. Um, <laughs> so I yeah, and I went back there this summer in July and 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 climbed Beautiful. it with with my sweetheart and. And we, we got, we, we got on the climb in, in the evening time, right before sunset. And so we we're like, oh, we can do this in two hours. Right. So we, like, we got on the climb at like 730 and the sun was going to go down at like 930. Right. Um, and it was the windiest, it was like the strongest wind I've ever experienced on a rock climb. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's quite, it was quite, quite challenging in, in that way. And then the sun was going down. And so it oh, turned it man. into, it turned into like an adventure for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the other unique thing about this climb is that it's a, it's a free hanging, like 120 foot rappel, right. <laughs> Which means basically you're rappelling right off the stomach block and you're hanging in free, free air. Like your yeah. feet aren't touching, you know? And, and let's see, Sarah went first and, and she had her first experience getting, getting, having gotten the rope stuck in a rock, um, kind of field at the bottom. And so then there was a problem during the rappel and then it was getting dark. And so then the adventure turned into like, this, this is scary. This is a rope stuck situation. This fucking yeah. sucks. And me being at the top of the climb, looking down at her, just being like, like kind of praying, you know, just yeah, like, you got yeah. this. Oh yeah, you did get that. Okay, sweet. Right. And yeah. 
no big deal. We went back to camp. So I know it's a special place in my heart. The Sawtooths fucking love, excuse me, love it's the Sawtooths. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, if, if you've never yeah, visited the, the Sawtooth Mountains. Don't go. Don't go. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google it. That's, you know, you'll be fine. Just, I mean, but that's the beautiful thing about Idaho, right? Is that like not a lot of people actually go. I mean, I mean, it's uh, sure it's crowded at, at the Redfish Lake or whatever. Well, and I've like. got, but I've got, I've got to say, Miles, the the uh, with the lockdown, right? So we yeah. we gone up, we went up there, like we love it up there, and uh, so we've noticed a lot more people went up after the after the lockdown so that that kind of like everybody needed to everybody was all of a sudden a, a camper <laughs> you know like, everybody loves hiking in seattle <laughs> now everybody yeah. In, yeah it's fucking it's crazy man the, the the trailheads are just packed and you know there's some kind of like renaissance you know nature loving resurgence happening you know, which I think is good and, and frustrating at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> the nice thing about Idaho is you, you're not paying for parking trail passes and all that stuff. It's like, and in fact, a lot of like dispersed camping as well. So yeah. it's, it, it's good. That's good and bad as well. But uh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful land, beautiful land. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. So, so yeah. I'm so let's go back to the Kickstarter. I mean, and I actually yeah. talk, I have a couple questions about the video. Um, mm -hmm. Did you produce, write, direct, shoot? What, how, how involved were you in the video? Um, I, I made basically the, I did it all myself. So Excellent. I, I, yeah. And, and I'll give credit certainly to the actors, right? Sure. Yeah. Like the they fabulous. did great child actors um and then my friend brett hansen who is a documentary filmmaker at a, a nonprofit called tvw he makes educational documentaries that are fantastic so he's he's this person in my life who um will will kind of corner me and be like you got to do this thing yeah like they're like there's this you, like you're putting out this art and you're gonna need this video and 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 I have the the tools, and you just got to do it. And I'll yeah, be like, let's... no, I'm scared. And he'll be like, come on, you got it. He'd be like, just come over at six o'clock. I'll yeah. show you a couple of things. Yeah. Here's my three thousand dollar camera. Right. Here's my Apple computer. I'll see you in two weeks. Wow. And then I literally That's won't awesome. see him for two weeks. Yeah. So, you know. Wow. So then I'll be like, shit. Now I'm like YouTubing how to do Premiere Pro. Well, he knows. Yeah, he knows what it takes, and it takes it's a lot of work. I I commend you yeah. on on putting that together because the video, uh, when I watched it the first time, I I watched it all the way through. I I got an an emotional reaction, which yeah. is one of those things that you you definitely want from your viewers. You want to to reach them emotionally and mm -hmm. and uh you know i i mentioned that it made me sad um but i do love the the positive spin like we've we've talked about so there and i i've and i really love this folk country uh sound that you guys mm -hmm. have um mm -hmm. now i know that you used to be a mandolin player yeah it, is there any mandolin on this record a tiny bit, a tiny bit, yeah. Just for um, added, uh, what do you say, ambiance? Yeah, right. Yeah. Just subtleties, right? right? So, yeah, I think a couple of tracks have have some mandolin. I think Old Cole has a little mandolin at the end, which is which is Mike Bitsis original tune. Uh, I think Bajo Tigre might have a little bit in the background. So, when, when, if if you if any of your listeners are are recording artists and they've ever been in the studio what what i notice is that after you go into the studio you start listening to things and you're like you start hearing things in recordings that you would have never heard before you know like oh there's a little shaker in there or like oh <laughs> yeah. there's an organ droning one chord and like yeah. that sounds really good or like oh that's overproduced right right 
so there are little things it's a line yeah it's definitely a fine line yeah 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 very cool subtleties of mandolin and and organ and tambourine on on the record so are any of uh any of the members of this band were they in your uh your old bluegrass project and do you still are you still in contact with those people um yeah no i i i did used to play in a bluegrass band uh a few different bluegrass bands back in like the early 2000s like you know um (laughs) forever ago when i was in college yeah yeah um and like man i was like super young then and pretty wild and and yeah we we had this band called head for the hills and we toured around the west coast and and we and i played a lot of mandolin in that I basically, that's all I did in that band was played mandolin, bluegrass and stuff. But no, that, that band broke, disbanded. Um, Really? Yeah, we did a few records and then um, one of my bandmates got in a little bit of trouble with the law and Uh and, and the cannabis. Oh, geez. You know, back when cannabis was like, yeah you, like you like you'd get your door busted down with like the SWAT team if you had like a few plants like that that basically happened right and wow like, anyways those guys are fantastic um they ended up moving to scotland um wow dirk and his wife and and so yeah so that project fizzled out but you know to be honest i i was ready for something something different i i got into klezmer music for a while was, yeah was um, that like the the uh like playing bar mitzvahs and stuff like that we did do um <laughs> we did, we did, <laughs> my memory is rare my, no my no no you're right it's jewish, <laughs> it's jewish music so like yeah we did um we did we did weddings we did okay. weddings. yeah like traditional jewish style weddings we did purim at the temple like we did we did jewish celebrations it was super fun it's like a seven person band with like yeah clarinet and a fucking accordion and mandolin and guitars everything violins and we did that. I did that for three years and I quit because it was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was stressed out. I was at work and then I had to study music on the weekends. Like, I don't want to oh, study music. I want to write country songs. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I love, it. you know, I tell you, mm. I, when I found country, right. And I'll, and I'll say, cause I, when I was growing up, I was like, ah, oh, country's terrible, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I ended up watching this. I, <laughs> I ended up watching this documentary on, uh, it was like a C CMT or country music, whatever. And, uh-huh. and I watched this documentary and then I realized like, there's some really, really cool old country. That's like, yeah, for sure. It's just, you know, uh, Ralph's was it Ralph Stanley and the yeah. Plinch mountain boys or whatever. Yeah, that, for sure. For sure. Like, man. And then I listened to that for a lot, long time. And, you know, I still love Hank and, and stuff. I guess that's kind of a cliche, but um, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, just that your country music, the best yeah, shit. Right? You know, it's just, there, there's something to it. And I, I love the, I love your sound. You know, I'm going to try not to gush too much, but it's oh, nice when I hear something that I'm like, this is, this is refreshing because it's, it's a folk country mix and it's not super sad but it's still kind of got those somber mm-hmm. country tones and right you know I, I don't know i i thoroughly enjoyed it and i recommend nice. that you guys all go check it out uh there are links in the description and uh i think uh you had mentioned to me that you were gonna play something potentially for us yeah 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 i can strum a tune for you guys the song is called maria you take my earphones off for a sec. <clears throat> Maria, where you been all this time? You been running around with every fighting guy under the fourth street lights, chasing love in circles and spinning around your nose. Can't you read the sign on the highway said you left a worried soul? Well, your smile burns in my mind. Makes my heart dance in my chest like a monarch butterfly. Well, I'm 
I'll stand here in the pouring rain. Won't you come back home and sing the same old song you wrote about me, darling, over and over again? Maria, where you been all this time? Run from every love you find as if your heart were blind. When you wrap your arms around me above the Frisco Bay, sing the song you wrote about me and then you went away. But your smile burns in my mind, makes my heart dance in my chest like a monarch butterfly. I'm standing here in the pouring rain. Won't you come back home and sing the same old song wrote about me, darling, over and over again? Maria, are you running out of day? Running from all your troubles on the beaches in LA. Did you forget your guitar when they offered you the pay? Are you running from your restless heart or are you running from, from me? Well, your smile burns in my mind. Makes my heart dance in my chest like a monarch butterfly. I'm standing here in the pouring rain. Won't you come back home and sing the same old song you wrote about me, darling, over and over again? Thanks, Miles. Yeah. That was awesome, any, dude. Anytime. Man. So, so I, uh, I, I was just thinking, uh, you, are you still set up? at the bog or did you did you move out of the bog or yeah i i left the bog probably five years ago oh wow okay yeah yeah so did, did you sell the bus and the rest did did I you ever get the it, you know did you ever get the bus going because i i, I remember leasing you know okay yeah it was a uh, affordable squalor <laughs> you know um, I lived there for ten years, and wow, and I did a lot of fun, fun stuff. Well, it's kind of a you had to you had to work too, right? You you got to kind of contribute. I mean, a little bit, yeah. And, and for for folks who who have no idea what we're talking about, right? Because we just the bog is a, is like one of these funky kind of community backwoods living communities in somewhere in western washington um, yeah that's right We're, that but it's like unknown yeah like we all many of us probably know a place like it yeah you know but it kind of there was a joke a running joke for for um the bog that it was a drinking community with an intentional problem right so like um <laughs> And that's just a joke, it, you know, yeah. there, there are all kinds of different people that showed up at this place to live and, you know, building a community where everybody contributes, you know, and there's, there's democracy and fairness. It's really, 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 really hard to do. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a ton of payoff. Um, and yeah, like we, we built a, a community center, you know, uh, one of my projects was like getting internet set up for all these bogsters and that like totally failed. Oh, really? um, yeah. It, and I think, I, and then there was a time when like something really bad happened. Oh no. Yeah. Like a really, really bad thing happened. Um, but it like brought the community together and then we like, we like wrote a vision statement. Oh really? And then we like wow. wrote, a. then we like wrote a, a voting procedure. Okay. You know? Yeah. So it's kind of one of those um, examples of like it takes a storm to build a community. Sure. You know. Yeah, I just so, recently. Uh, yeah, I just recently was uh, listening to this thought on the winner, winner versus loser, 
And oftentimes, uh, the idea was that oftentimes it's the loser that benefits more. And, and sometimes it does take a storm to, uh, mm -hmm. to really bring a community together. Well, yeah. That's, that's, that's very interesting. I know that was just, uh, I remember I came down, I filmed a concert, uh, and, uh, yeah. I think, uh, what we was it like outdoor show March of the species or something? Some oh, like yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you and Stu played a few tunes for, this is back when I had my camera and I was running around and trying to, trying to be a filmmaker and all that, you know? And, um, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I think somewhere I still have that footage, <laughs> but, uh, you should send it to me if you find it. Yeah, I will. Like a little video. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Like, uh, I remember you and do you ever talk to, to, uh, to Stu anymore? Yeah, I do. Yep. He's yeah. doing great. That's yep. awesome, man. I miss that guy. Uh, yeah. He has a, he has a kid now. Very cool. Very he has cool. a kid and a little step kid and he's doing good. He's out on Lummy Island. Lummy Island. Lummy, man. With, uh, Lummy, Lummy Wild. They have a fishing cooperative out there. That's pretty awesome. That island is something yeah. special. That that island is something special for mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah, I remember you guys were playing. I think I've got some video by the the uh, worm casting. Oh yeah, yeah, the worm <laughs> farm. Yeah, yeah, or maybe even in his boat. <laughs> Was Pete there? Was my boy Pete Ski there from San Francisco? I feel like. Gosh, I, there was a time when someone was following us around with the I camera. It was just, it was like, it was for a weekend or something. And actually <laughs> the one memory that I have was uh, that in the club next to the club you guys were playing in was. Uh, oh, okay. It was like a bar. Hump. <laughs> oh was, yeah. I remember that. We were like looking through the window. We're like, there's G shock. He was wearing the Thinking nose. Of the yeah. Oh yeah, dude. It was awesome. <laughs> I, love, I love uh digital underground yeah. I was <laughs> well cool miles thanks for joining me in the brain man this has been awesome yeah that was super fun super super cash best of luck to you guys rooster crow yes. everybody go to their kickstarter page uh link in the description kick them down with a little cash you won't be disappointed it's a great album happy new year everybody please like comment and subscribe hit that bell so you know when we put new videos out follow us on instagram and twitter at brain aqua this has been aqua brain tv remember to keep your head up and keep those knees bent